Okay, so Sam has come round to do a pre-record for this because um, before the live show we're going to do a few rehearsals and what have you. So we're going to do this chat about working on the Rise of Skywalker. So thanks for coming, Sam. Thank you, Lee. Good to see you, mate. And um, yeah, just can you probably best for you to start and just share your experience. What was it like from day one? You know, when you got the call, how did it work? You know, how if you could explain how you got involved. Yeah, well, obviously. Uh RT Builders for the past four years and I guess it was God when even was it was it October I think it was I think it was yeah. October 2018 20, wow yeah. okay so I got the call from you thank you very much yeah and uh, that call went something like I think you just went you're in but I didn't quite comprehend exactly what you were saying if you remember yes there was yes. this whole because yeah. I thought everybody had got in and I thought it was just droid builders yeah we're going to be all in the film this is going to be amazing and um it was just a select few so and uh there were a number of droids that were obviously used in the film and uh i, I don't know you know it's it's, it's weird because i kind of had to sort of think about how i'm gonna operate past that so when you're told something ex so exciting like basically you're going to be working on star wars um that i guess for me is you know dream come true it's kind of unbelievable but you know not impossible and uh you know when you called me up and said because we had a number of chats about it yeah. and you know i said you know thanks very much and you said well it wasn't me it was jj that's right exactly. so yeah, yeah. so yeah. How, did, how did that come about so, well so you know thankfully the creatures department do get people involved the, the other droid builders like they did oliver and myself they get additional people in because they're experienced in operating droids basically and um we just offer a group of people together and a selection's made not by me i'm i'm around i'm a little bit involved but only to answer questions basically mm. and um yeah the, the, the selection was made and we had mike come back as well mike for the yep. um james Furtado yep. was involved briefly and your good self and thankfully as you work for yourself you were quite readily available and spent i don't know how long were you there for I was there for about a month okay yeah right. which is funny cool. when you think when you consider how much footage is actually in the film versus what we shot which again it just yeah. boggles my mind on all the stuff we shot and it's just that fraction yeah. of time yeah it's bizarre yeah, the, the amount of work involved is is phenomenal yeah we, we all hear that but to actually physically doing it and then you see what ends up in the film you're like wow that really does happen yeah. and you're just a small segment of that so imagine all the other things that we do as well in gotcha. it's just like so much on the cutting room floor yeah. but uh, you know but when you know when we looked at uh, when we got to the cinema to see the film you know for the very first time you were working you'd flown back in from LA yep, yep. and the world premiere yeah. and myself yeah. and Giles Redpath were on uh, the blue carpet yes. with my R2D2 and from that we then went into a press junket and then we were actually in the wrong... I've forgotten all this. <laughs> You've forgotten this, forgotten right? This. Yeah, we I was were... coming back now. So Giles and I were <laughs> suited and booted at the premiere. We got our tickets. Your droid was on backup just in case anything went wrong. Um, but we had to modify your droid. There was, there was a ton yeah. of stuff we had to do, yeah. wasn't there, to get it done. So yeah. my dome, your droid, it was a just-in-case situation. Yeah. Uh, we did a dry run, I think, the day before. And, um, yeah, then from the press junket Giles and I ran up to the to the room um, to the to the cinema room and it was this tiny tiny little cinema and we were sat there and I go this doesn't feel right there was like nine seats inside the cinema and it's I think it said screen five on it and I was like Giles something isn't right something isn't right and he's going yeah, yeah yeah it's fine it's fine I was like I don't it just is wrong we ran downstairs and we were in the wrong cinema <laughs> So we nearly missed the whole film anyway. <laughs> so we had to kind of uh, muscle past everybody. And at the beginning sequence was so action packed. We didn't know what we'd missed. So there's a few minutes yeah. there. Yeah. It was so action packed. And I was lost in this whole kind of plethora of action. Um, but, you know, I, I can't remember. I mean, I, I knew the scenes that we'd, I'd shot on and, and I, I knew where some of the droids were going to be. But because there's so many angles and so much you know cg and diversification it was quite difficult to kind of see anything that was going on because 
Yeah. You know, you needed a moment. So, if it was very fast if, as well, was not it? Yeah, if it was played in half speed, I still th- don't think I would have seen half the stuff. So, <laughs> madness, yeah, madness. Well, well, for this, I've been playing back the the, vid, the, the film in slow motion, you know, yeah. and, and finding out more even now. So, as, as we've gone through some clips, and we'll show while we're chatting. So, uh, Absolutely. Yeah. So, your first day on set, where was that? Where were you? That was at Pinewood. So, uh, drove in to Pinewood early one morning and I was meeting Mike to basically register me to get me into the site because it was obviously a secure compound and uh, there was the bit where I sort of drive up the Pinewood signs there and I knew I kind of had to get you know what I'm like anyway right so it's a little bit eccentric and over the top and all the rest of it a lot of it's an act but part of me in my in my heart and that sort of expression as soon as I saw the Pinewood sign, I was just like, ah, you know, really shouting. And uh, I got it out of my out of my system. And then I was cool when I, when I kind of came in, you know. <laughs> Maybe I was not like, inside, but uh, on yeah, the outside. T- yeah, totally, yeah. totally. And then yeah. there was a part um, uh, where you didn't want me to see the set. And, you know, I didn't know what to imagine. Do you remember this? Yeah. And you were like, I've got loads of things to talk to you about, but you can't see the set yet. And I was like, okay, fine. And then you got me into the set and you were almost like an open your eyes moment. And... You're in Star Wars. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the doors open and it's you know London, <laughs> and then it's Star Wars. Yeah. And uh, you know, I was on the what we now know as the Tantive Five um, set, which was called something completely different at the time. And nobody was saying Tantive Five. Nobody was no. saying anything of the sort. Well, we were even speculating yeah. ourselves. Is it? Isn't it? You know, I'm not sure. And even though I'd read some of the script, I didn't know. Yeah. So uh, we speculated and, and assumed it was right. Well, people were saying things like, oh, that's the Jetson pod, and that was this, and that was that. And then people were saying, oh, it's destroyed. And this was just on set. And, uh, you know, and my first job, which you gave me, was... <laughs> I um, what's coming now. <laughs> uh, oh, I've driven round uh, the roundabout too quickly, and all the droids have fallen over in the back of the van. And um, that was my first job to repair them. Yes. So, uh, yeah, thanks for that. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, working on set, you kindly helped out with a few R2 scenes as well. Yes, um, yes. Not only the, because where the Tantive was, that was on a stage, wasn't it? On a film set. Yep. But then where the Falcon was, that was in the local park. Black Park. Right near yep. Pinewood, Black Park. Yep. Yep. And you came to that as well, to film outside. <laughs> and um, you know what's coming there, don't I you? I do, I do. And uh, you went to have a look at the Falcon, didn't you? Which is iconic, yeah. of course, and the outside looks stunning. And the ramps down. It was amazing. It really and was off amazing. You go. Well, what? No, what happened? If you remember, we we you said, "Do you want to go on it?" And I was like, "Of course." And um, we went to go and do it, and they shouted, "Action!" And we were like, "Oh, I don't know if I can say this bit, but we went walking back." And I said to you, "Oh, now I feel like I've I've been teased." But as I looked up, Daisy Ridley was walking along the path the other way, and she looked at me like, "Is he talking about me?" And I was like, <laughs> I was like. Ah, you know, awful. But yeah, you're right. So we went back later, and they were sort of changing the set around. And you said, you know, go up the ramp. R two's up there. So sure enough, I walk up this ramp, and um, yeah, it was all scaffolding. I don't know what I thought. I honestly thought that maybe there was going to be something more up there. Yeah, but um, yeah. yeah, for a yeah. split moment, you do kind of hope you you can yeah. see there's scaffolding going on. But when you go up the ramp, like you say, there is literally nothing. It is just scaffolding. And a little platform, which was... Uh, that's it, that's it. And yeah. but R2-D2 was there, so I mean, that was, you know, that was yeah. something. And I think that was... I can't even... No, that wasn't my first day on set. That was that was some weeks, yeah, that that was, some weeks that was, into it, wasn't that it? Was but later on. it yeah. wasn't, you know, that set, because it was real and because it was uh, in a park, you know, it was... The ground was uneven. Uh, it was a nightmare getting droids to and from the location. Mm-hmm. We had to borrow, like, a... I don't even know what the thing was. What was it? Like a... Um, it was it was greens and they had this big it was like a chariot wasn't yeah. it? I used to call it the chariot it's huge wheels with yeah it was like a chariot but yep. we could just about get a droid on wasn't it that's it moving it all through it was brilliant yep. I don't know how we would have coped without it so uh, no. we were shuttle running droids because we had three astromechs on the set there'd be or two was it was it hmm. just an R5 and R2 R5 and R2 okay yeah, yeah, yeah. so we had an R5 and R2 there and uh, yeah because of course we had to put them away at night as well yeah um Back and forth. Back and forth. So uh, awful. Yeah. When I got the phone, when I get the, you know, it's all right working on the set and stuff. But I tell you what, when you get that phone call and you go, "What's the scene?" and Lee goes, "Oh, it's Black Park," and it's like, "Oh God, do I really want to put myself?" Because it's not, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the time you are kind of waiting for things to happen. But when it happens, it's crazy, isn't it? It's yeah. ab- absolutely oh, yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um, there was one day at Pinewood where we were about to call it a day. I think it was creeping up to five. 
and there's myself and Adam and a few other people around and uh, they, they asked for a particular droid um, which I think they were calling it by the name of Les at the time and we had Les and Robocop didn't we yeah, and uh, it, it literally was Les and Robocop to the set now yeah. please yeah. and it was panic stations we, we were like oh we're not going to be doing anything today and literally get out get it on set um, as quietly as you possibly can without slamming doors yeah. or uh, yeah. disturbing anybody yeah. or any of the actors and stuff yeah. but yeah I'm absolutely amazing so absolutely you mentioned amazing. Les um, which is an R5 dome R6 dome R6 dome sorry we'll leave right. that in okay Okay. yeah we will that's, yep. about, that's okay. fine um, <laughs> and that isn't seen in the film I don't think well no I don't think it is um, it's it's certainly seen it's in uh, I believe that particular droid is in the uh, the manual and uh well, I know it's in the manual because I've seen it. Okay. And it's yep. also in the background shots of some of the extras where JJ's talking about Carrie Fisher and just announcing that how they're going to do this, um, you know, the CG work. And, oh, with um, the behind the scenes. With, with, okay. with, the, um, with the footage. Yeah, certainly. Okay. In the, but, you know, it might be. And certainly in the manual, there are a few images that, you know, stills taken from that. But again, you know, everything happens so quickly. And it, uh, even now we've all been busy but yeah, I probably should sit and watch the film maybe in slow motion or something I don't know <laughs> give I'm, I'm, a few hours yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but um, so R6 wasn't seen but R2 is R2D2 and other R2 astromechs as well yeah um, and that that really wasn't requested was it because I, I've always told people before that JJ doesn't like R2 astromech domes because he likes an R2D2 yeah. um, to be on its own and then let's have the lampshade style to domes to differentiate between the other astromechs yeah but however <laughs> um a bit we got a bit creative and we just tried the r2 because we had an r2 dome as well didn't we yeah yeah and yeah. what you find is you, you do shoot a lot of scenes as you say we we did hours and hours of, of shooting you don't know what's going to be seen no. but then suddenly you've got the same droid in so many different scenarios you think how can i sort yep. this out how can i make it look different Hence the dome change. It Absolutely. seemed like the right thing to do at the time. Yeah. Um, I don't think we've been told off for it or got blamed for it or anything. You <laughs> know. It's, so. And hey, for, for the few seconds and it's in deep background and what have you. Yeah, yeah. definitely. You know, yeah. I mean, there was a there was a really good moment. I think the moment that I knew that I was just gonna, well, we were just gonna get away with whatever we needed to get away with on that particular day is when your boss Neil Skellen came in, and he just pointed at the dome and went, "I really like that," and I was like, oh, "Okay, okay, that's cool. Good done. We'll use yeah, that. We'll use yeah. that then. Brilliant." Yeah. Yep. And, uh, you know, and there was so many other props there. There was so much stuff that, you know, we couldn't quite get our hands on or they were filmed in other, in other locations. And very much it was the, um, the Tentive 5 set and the uh, the Black Part set that I was on hmm. and, and worked within. Yep. But also I was very green. And um, there, was point, there was a point, I think, where you came up to me and went, um, that's the director's monitor. You, you're you not allowed to stand there. You've got to be over with. And there's JJ's just like, oh, and I'm going, oh. Yeah, All right. Yeah, Excuse yeah. me, mate. Um, I just need to. Uh, just. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And sadly, I think you got mistaken for me a few times as well. So oh, yeah. if you were ever in the way and you thought it was me, <laughs> thanks for that. Yeah. Sorry um, about that. Yeah. yeah. There, there was a real, a classic moment when uh, when JJ came up to me and said, "Right, um, we need this scene and we need R two to do this and R two to do that." And I was like, "Yeah, no problem at all, JJ. Not not a problem." And I just turned around to Lee and went, "Right, Lee." <laughs> We're filming this scene, and this is what needs to happen. And Lee's just like, "What the hell's yeah. going on? Yeah. What are and you doing?" Second, I did think, "What the hell is he doing talking to you?" <laughs> but, uh, no, of course, that's uh, that's cool. You know, what, it, just, what, it gets done. What I really liked about JJ though is that um, you know he he's human. He's not robotic. Yeah. He was a nice guy throughout. I mean, there was you know, there's no personal. Um, you know, I don't know the guy or anything like that. But he was just very nice to work with and uh, appreciative, and you know a few times I sort of moved out of his way and you know it had been briefed to me sort of don't stare at the actors they're getting in the zone and things like that and you sort of put your head down and he's just like hey hey how you doing how you yeah, doing and I'm like yeah, oh, right. yeah really yeah. good Mr. Yeah. Open, it's fine you know and uh, yeah it's it, it's the whole thing was just amazing and you know the, some of the stuff we got to do okay it wasn't a lot of it wasn't seen in the film but you know stuff with R2 and you know they're the scene with um, Anthony Daniels as well yes yeah I'll, I'll get to that in a minute because um, I was going to go through about oh, okay. a few a few scenes you see with R2 so first of all <laughs> <laughs> um, just just some insight really onto other things and the way we do stuff yeah. R2's on the Falcon and Finn goes past R2-D2 and gives him a tap and he's being shaken 
Yeah. And he shakes from side to side. And that was done by a guy called Sonny, who's one of the prop masters on set. And he was literally lying on the floor, shaking him. Because mm. you f I find that with a remote control, when you do that, it can, it can drift, it can go backwards or forwards. And if they want it to stay on a mark for the side to side, then you know it's better if someone's on the floor, literally out of shot. Yeah. And you see a barrel roll across as well, which he, I think he dodges or just skips over. And that literally is one of the prop guys standing just out of shot chucking about because you know obviously it doesn't just happen it's no. you know someone's got to do that so there's a whole wall of us along the fat side of the falcon hidden out of shot me controlling sunny on the floor a guy with a barrel then you've got the film crew with you as well and the sound man it's, yep. it's pretty packed in there because you went on the falcon didn't you so you I saw yeah, yeah yeah you know it is just like you see it's not cut away or anything no. you walk around it it's got all the walls it's a 360 set um, on one of the primer stages, That's it. which yeah. is you know, it's, and it's just so iconic. It's a cool thing to do, isn't it? It was amazing. Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely amazing. Absolutely and amazing. Um, so, with the movement, we were doing the same at Black Park, weren't we? When yes. JJ asked the same question again. That's it. Can we make R two move? Yeah. Thankfully, you were on set. I was. <laughs> yes. Uh, and you've got to remember about this. You sort of set me up really definitely yeah you definitely. did um definitely. so the the you know although the footage didn't come to light that so from what i've seen so far but i believe it was filmed i was also then interviewed by the lady oh, that was on were. set yes. yeah yes. so myself and adam were then yeah. interviewed but yeah. jj sort of said um and i'm always wearing star wars t-shirts so he was like oh it's, you've got to do it because you're wearing a star wars t-shirt i think is what he said and then i sort of had to crouch under r2d2 and he's heavy you know he's not light what does that thing weigh I'm not sure. I don't know the way of it, but uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's it's considerable. It's all aluminium, so um, yeah, it's yeah. it's considerable. So to get my hands under there and actually move him, plus then I've got C3PO looking down, going, "Oh, who is that down there?" And I'm going, "Oh, it's Sam Prentice, the R2 <laughs> guy." And he's going, "Who? Sorry." And I'm thinking, "Oh God, what's my life come to?" And the whole all all the people were there, and you it soon dawns on you. First and foremost, JJ Abrams is telling you to do something and directing you. You're trying to move a very heavy droid. You're being filmed. This is one of your first days as well, yeah. I think. I'm getting in the way yeah. because they're going, can you tuck your legs in a bit more? And I'm going, you know, yeah. it, it, it was... Um, but yeah, there was a, there's a scene, and I'm sure we show it, but where we had to kind of move R2. Yeah, which did make the cut. It did. And, um, but I had to move the dime. Yeah. So, oh, well, you know, yeah. good for you. Yeah, did you get interviewed for that? No, I got sore thumb though. Then that I do not return, I want you to know that you have been a, a real friend, R2. My best one, in fact. Going back to the first scene, something I did forget, um, which is when they're plugging in the data port into yeah. R two. You were, you didn't see any of that shot, did you? No, you told me about the you told me about so, the changes. Yeah, um, so we had um, we had quite a lot to do because R two actually drove into the shot originally. Um, then we had the arm open. Then we had him put the data port into R two. We have a close up of the lights going up, um, and then what we did shoot as well was a flap opens and the periscope comes up. Yep. as though he's in, in a searching mode now the, the periscope was used all through filming never seen in the film yep. so and that was quite a rig that I had to set up and we had a special dome for that which we had to swap out yep. um, and I had a, I made that up on um, in the workshop actually there's a behind the scenes video which I'll show yep. um, of the periscope popping up again never used and JJ was never happy with the close up because yeah. the lights he wanted more detail on the lights when they're sort of uploaded from, from um, green to red or red to green and we ended up flying out to Bad Robot, Matt Denton and myself, for a week. And we shot that as a close-up wow. in Bad Robot about two months before the film came out. My word. So, uh, and that was just a close-up just for the film. You know, the lengths, the lengths they go to, it was just a detail he wasn't happy with. And, um, wow. yeah, bad, that was done in Bad Robot. And there was so much to do when we did the original scene with the periscope and the arm opening. We had two people on the radio. So yeah. we had two transmitters and a great puppeteer called Lynn, she mm. puppeteered Dio yep. and um, with Robin Guyver yep. and she helped, so she was she was made up. We had the best day and she was so pleased she could do some R2 stuff. Sadly it wasn't seen, but no, like you were saying earlier on, you know, that's, that's stuff that doesn't make the cut. Yeah, I think it would have been a completely different film if they'd, um, you know, so I don't know, just some of the stuff we filmed, you know, the, uh, the, the, the layer scene, you know, that was, I was on set there for five days Mm. With the, yeah. you know, without the fade, yeah, and different angles and yeah. going over and over and over again with it. Do you remember the guy that was one of the astromechs 
this guy was really overacting and uh, you, you knew, I don't think he was even in shot, but he was really wrenching something, wasn't he? Do you remember? And I was, I just went up to him and said, I'll oh, just tone it back a little bit because none of this oh, is going to yes. be seen. I do remember. Yes. And then he started talking yeah. to me and I think I, did I text you help? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a, med- yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so of course I just stood there and laughed. Yeah, you did, you did. You did come and save me in the end though. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, it was good. It was, that yeah. was, that was, that yeah. was good. That was yeah. good. But again, you know, um, there was one, I was, you know, and anything can happen. So I was working with one astromech and then it was a slightly different color to what they wanted in shot. And then it had to be removed because it, right. it was brighter than, it was taking the eye from R2-D2. Funny enough, you, that made you very happy for, it some, did. for some reason. Don't know why, but uh, yeah, didn't hear the end of that for a little while. No, I forgot. I managed to forget forget about, about that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, let's bring now. it all back. Not now. Let's bring it all back. <laughs> not yeah. now. The interaction with Anthony Daniels and his wife, who are both on set, yeah. uh, certainly when we we're on the Tantive Five stuff, and they were just the most charming of people. Yeah. Really, really yeah. charming. His wife was there with sweets, which was nice. Yeah. I don't think I had any. Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah just really really charming and you, and you hear you know certainly in the Star Wars universe you sort of hear people saying oh well that person's like this everyone's going to have an off day but Anthony yeah. and, and his wife would yeah. ju- and in fact everybody there wasn't anybody on set that I could uh, I could say wow they you know couldn't believe that person Billy Dee Williams was fantastic yeah. you know yeah. brilliant yeah. and to see these people and just be there like alright with, with my remote control yeah. it's uh, yeah. bizarre it's, bonkers it's cool it's cool. Bonkers. And yeah, Anthony, because I did an interview with Anthony for this show, which is yep. going to be aired later. And um, he was, he was always charming and he had Brilliant. loads of good st- things to say about the droid builders around the world. Mm. And um, yep. yeah, it's a, it's a great chat and that will come across hopefully on the interview that people will see later. Let's so, hope so. Let's yeah. hope so. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. definitely. So Sam, you've got to tell me about some behind the scene footage. Um, yeah. It seemed to go sort of viral amongst us droid builders when it came oh. out, the behind the scenes footage. Yeah. Of you sort of, walked into shot maybe and out yeah but it wasn't really in shot because let's be fair he wasn't dressed oh that sounds even worse now doesn't it <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't in costume yeah but he was wearing a um i don't even know where yeah. i was going i think that might have been the day that i went up on the falcon okay possibly yeah that's true you maybe what you think you were making your way to yeah on the falcon because i was obviously okay. you know yeah. it's sort of like get yeah. out of the way i'm getting up there yeah but, and um, then hang on there's a camera they're filming something yeah but, i will just walk out as though nobody's ever seen me yeah you, you do look quite guilty you. oh it was awful <laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely right. awful um right. but yeah it's uh you know i think what happened if remember back i think we went up the ramp and someone yelled action and we had to stay up there for a bit didn't we yes yeah I think we, we were did. we were yeah. hanging about there I for a bit did. I think we did and actually that reminds me of another shot which i think you helped me set, start to set up um and again we don't see it unfortunately but r2 comes down the ramp of yeah. the millennium falcon so when they let la- when the falcon lands on fire um the one of the droids walks in with the fire extinguisher to put it out which again you see it was made by paul shabester yeah, yeah yeah yeah, 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 um, yeah i forgot what we called it now but it, the guy was in a box and he had a couple of fire extinguishers, which were actual CO2 gas canisters. Yep. And he was walking backwards because of the way the legs were made. That's it. So he had a camera that way, but walking that way, which is really ass about face. Yep. Then he had to get in position and, and blast the, the Falcon. That's it. But you see behind the scene footage, Paul Shabester, he li- lifts this lid on him and he's literally bolted him into the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> which is... Which is bonkers, but I remember, you know, I really remember that day. Such a cool build. But that, but that particular day, I couldn't. The rigor around health and safety, and they had somebody come out to measure the oxygen yeah, levels right. and all that that's kind right. of stuff. Yeah. You know, it's the, yeah. the 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 creatures guys, the the guys that are in these costumes, they <laughs> they push them. They really, really yeah. push them to yeah. the to their limits. Yeah. Uh, you know, not passing out or anything, but it's it, absolutely amazing. Yeah. Absolutely astonishing. Yeah, and I've always said Warwick is the same. You know, he. Yeah. He's, he's a trooper just like the rest of them. You know, yeah. he's not a prima donna like, do you know who I am? He no. just goes and goes. He's, he's brilliant. So, absolutely. Uh, you know, absolutely. Um, and they all are. It's, yep. it's, in fact, I've got a little story about uh, Warwick. Go if, for I, if I can. So uh, we go were, the same day that at five o'clock we were told to get on set and quickly move everything around, they were setting up an, another shot. So we had to move the droids out of, out of shot. And it was me and Adam at the time. And I had an aluminium droid, very, very heavy, trying to get it out the door. And we were lifting it up as well. 
and I sort of backed up, nearly fell over, and I was swearing at the time. And I just looked down, and it's the first time I'd seen Warwick Davis. And I'm effing this and effing that. Oh, hi, Warwick. And he was like, oh, hi, you all right there? And I went, yeah, wish I hadn't, you know, didn't have such a heavy droid. And he was like, okay. But he was just chilling, you know? And I was like, oh, God, now I'm in his space. This is really awkward. But he really down to earth. And, you know, even in the Creatures Workshop where he was on the uh, the controls for... Um, Claude, I think, at one point, and he was doing the uh, just yes. just behind yeah. the scenes, just yeah. you know, doing the eyes and moving things around, um, and it was you know, it just one of the boys, yeah, just yeah, hanging he, out. He, he loves to get involved, mm. and you know, he was going to drive some mouse droids in one of the films we did, but unfortunately, he was too busy in costume. But he used to race right control cars, yeah. So he's into all that, yeah. you know, and um, yeah, he's, he loves it when all the when all the gadgets and toys come out. Definitely, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. It's cool. So. There was the first couple of days on set was in the is in the Tantive Five jungle scene, and I'm hidden with a bunch of other people basically behind rock behind rocks. So I think the first two days uh, I was getting covered with because they they would stop the action oh, and sorry. throw leaves around. There's a guy whose job was literally to put. I'm sure he did more than just throw leaves on yeah. the floor, but that was part of his job. So he'd put leaves on the floor and then one guy would come around with a hose and just spray all the rocks. But of course, we're behind the rocks. They can't see us. So we're getting covered <laughs> and absolutely drenched in, in drenched in water. Oh, and there was the day that um, they decided to do... Uh, so during the layer scene, they did a bit where it was raining inside, yes. wasn't it? Yeah, because they used to have like water storage containers up in the roof. Yep. Which they used, I think they used to preload them with water and then just let them out. That's it. To, and, to however powerful they needed to be. And they said, yeah, we're going to do this now. So I went over to the AD and I said, hey, there's a droid here. Obviously, you know, <laughs> it can't really get wet because it's 24 volts, blah, blah, blah. And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah it'd be fine, it'd be fine, it'd be fine. And um, then they opened, <laughs> then they opened the rain up. And it just went all over the droid and you know the weathering started running off of it and and all sorts of stuff happened and um i just had to let it happen because they were obviously shooting a sequence or they might have been doing something for cg or whatever but this sequence was being shot and uh one of the guys came up sort of towards the end and said oh is that droid okay getting wet and i went no no <laughs> and he's like oh oh okay so i think in the end they put someone had an umbrella sort of over because also with the robocop um, that had a that had to have yes, um, it did. some yeah. bits over it as yeah. well, didn't it? Yeah, because they had all the electronics. Yeah, That's it. it did. It did. And then um, a bit of a spoiler alert. This one is, but when Leia passes away, ah. so they're all they're all around the bed, and it's something that Hassan and I spoke about earlier on in the interview when we, we talked about him in R two, <laughs> and um, I had missed it myself. You've just shown me this clip. Yeah, and. <laughs> again it's best if you talk about it sure but, yeah uh, okay so <laughs> so the layer scene went on and on and on and it was one of, like i said before you know really appreciate my time on the film and doing all that kind of stuff but you know five days of seeing somebody basically fade away you know and i know it's touching and, and I'm, I'm on board with all that but it's a bit monotonous especially when you're not really doing anything so um the ad a guy called nick yeah. And I, well yeah. um, we we lifted one of the astromechs up onto a rock formation, because we thought where where they were filming, which was inside of a cave, R two, all the main characters were there, and this this droid probably just wasn't going to be seen. Unfortunately, when we put it on the rocks, you can actually see the scene. And during that point, I think I actually switched it off and went to lunch. <laughs> Um, and, and it was a prime time to do it because everybody was still on set yeah. and I thought well I'll just switch this off and get yeah. in early which is what yeah. I did yeah. and um, yeah surprise and, surprise and as a, discla <laughs> as a disclaimer here we never leave set unless we're told by the ADs do we? You I know, must we, have been told we always check I yeah, must have been right. told so I think you would have checked with Nick yeah. or whoever and the ADs they go on the radio yeah. they check the monitors they're like no you're good to go you're not needed yeah so off you I, go I think so, it, uh, no in all honesty I think it was a I think there was a wider shot that was ended up that ended up making the cut yeah. but yeah. yeah we wouldn't have just yeah. uh, we wouldn't have just walked no, off but again fine. you know no. it's uh, I, I might have done I don't think I did <laughs> I don't know I can't I can't 100% tell you I mean this was this was some time ago this was you know a couple of, of years course. ago yeah, I guess now right. yeah and, and until you watch the film again yeah. it all comes flooding back that's it and behind the scenes is great because um, yes. you know obviously you weren't involved as much as I was but you just you just watch it all it just brings it all back yes absolutely no, absolutely <laughs> but again you know uh, the, the run up to this certainly for me you know I, I, you you know you put the call out to say tier 2 droids we need them now and the run up to to me seeing the film for the first time was a ton of work 
staying in a seedy hotel with Giles overnight with a uh, yes with, yeah, with yeah, that um, gl- yeah. glitter ball. Yeah. And um, I can't remember what did we do the day before. We did something the day before. Was it just um, practice? I think wasn't I think it? it was practice. Yeah. You practice run through. You were there just having a practice run through. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And then um, yeah. all the stormtroopers yeah. were there and yeah. pick up the yeah. tickets and off we went. Yeah. But um, so that comes through Disney, doesn't it? Yes. That does. So yeah, yeah. even yeah. though it's Lucasfilm yeah. that we're working for during the film and so on, yeah. then with the premieres and what have you, that gets handed over to Disney. Which they they do keep them as two separate companies. They they take they take care of different departments, and Disney are the red carpet or blue carpet in this case, aren't they? Yep. So you're dealing with them yeah. in this case, and yep. and now the R two builds thankfully are on the Lucas radar, mm. Lucas film radar, and the Disney radar. Yep. Thankfully, so um, you know maybe now's a good time to explain how that works though as well, Sam. How how you get involved in that, and maybe not go to the details of tier two, but you know how how people get to do the red carpet. Yeah, I mean, you put the call out that you needed a tier two, tier two R two D two, and um, we just didn't have any in the club at the time. There were there were some good ones, but they weren't That's right. they weren't quite there. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I managed to and, to and to be fair, sorry to yeah. interrupt. I had put a shout out for yeah. tier two R two. There was a new film coming out for goodness' sake. So you two know, years before uh, yeah. the first R two UK, That's right. you you put yeah. the, you put the call out yeah. about that and so, said we do need these. Yeah, and it wasn't and, quite time for R two as yeah. well during that time. But then there's a film coming out. It's going to get busy. Definitely, so, definitely. So yeah. I was lucky to, I was lucky in the fact to have basically been able to buy a partly built one, which I had to strip all the way down. It was probably about a nine, ten year old droid at the time, and uh, you know I needed new skins, I needed a whole bunch of new stuff. So I just threw some money at it, painted it, and uh, as one or two people know, you know it was tier two before the paint was dry. <laughs> Although that isn't the truth, though, is it? Because we got it to the point where. You know everything was pretty much there, but there were some issues with the ankle, and the literally the ankles were the bolts needed tightening up. But to get into there, you had to take everything out, and you know it was just complicated, really, really complicated. So, admittedly, yeah, two uh, goes, didn't you? Yeah, in tier two, because we, we yep. met one time yep. and it met one time, sadly not, and it was wrong. Yeah, and you were bitterly disappointed, and I went home crying. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a no-brainer. I assumed I was going there. It was going to be tier two, job done. You know, yeah. but, uh, but that's why tier two is so strict. Yeah. It needs to just be spot on. And it doesn't. It doesn't so, matter who you are with this yeah. either. You know, you can't fake this. It's if it's not spot on and it's not going to do the job, that's yeah. it. It's you know, and again, even being on the committee now and talking to the other guys about this, you know, there's no free ride for this. You've got to graft for no. it. So, yeah. but yeah, you know, like I say, but then of course you've got to have that. Um, the I've got to say, like the children in need thing. You know, there was a big drop off of the stage and I was very worried. And you've got to have that um, confidence in what you've built. And I think if I didn't have that in that particular droid, and by the way, it's the only droid that I've not face planted. Wow. Yeah. That's done it. <laughs> and uh, oh, now God. it's up for sale. You, you, may, <laughs> you, you may not take it out again then. Oh, God. When I was at Celebration London, couple of years ago yeah. when you guys were all there and there was just a sea of r2d2s there and uh, you know the first droid that i built was the q5 droid which i remember the first time i met you was at a brad function in um, oxford, oxford. Yep. House. and yeah. i yeah. had this do you remember yeah this god awful contraption it that wasn't I'd... god awful no i wouldn't, no, I wouldn't <laughs> say it's god awful come on it was two-legged mode and it yeah. and it was just not great and at any moment it could have fallen over yes. um it didn't give you that it didn't fall it didn't, over but, but yeah. um it could have done and um, when you first meet somebody like yourself for the first time, and I know you're better now, but and I was like, God, this is the guy. This is the man. And of course, then I'd also read on the forum that you were looking for droids. And, um, you know, George Aldridge even interviewed me early on into, into when I first got my uh, R2Q5 sort of on the... That's um, right. That's a great little YouTube video. You it is. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. with that, on off the back of that, you know, he asked. He asked the question, "What would you do if you got called up for a Star Wars film?" And that was just not even a thing. It just wasn't a, not you know. It'd be amazing, of course it would, but you know, it's it's probably never going to happen. These guys managed, you know, you guys managed to cement yourselves into what you were doing, or are still doing, and um, you know, it's just not for everybody. But fortunately, you know, being involved and you know, doing the right things and saying the right things and building the right type of droids, it's um, you know, it's it's happened so i've got to ask would you do it again if you got the call to work on a film again it's going to be a month and um this isn't a job offer by the way live on uh, 
porn looks like. But, uh, <laughs> would you do it again? From the experience, you know, it's... Yeah, you know what, I would. But I think I know better this time. And I'm not talking right. about walking into shot or anything. I'm talking about uh, having that sort of experience what the days are going to be like because a lot of the time you know we're sitting around and mm. i'm not used to doing that mm. at the best of times yeah. so yeah. you know there was a day where i think you were just drinking lattes and uh, and Probably. someone was fanning you with some big leaves <laughs> and i was there oh mr towsy shall i shall i repair r2 <laughs> and that r2 the r2 you know it's seen some action you know it has yeah I was, yeah i was thinking that actually. it's you know the, the, it the legs and if yeah. you look on one if you look on the left hand leg there's a lolly stick inside that I've epoxied on. Yes. Do you know about yes. this? Yes, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there was a bit that was, broke off. Because they're fiberglass foot yeah. Yeah. yeah, a bit yeah. that broke off. And I was yeah. like, yeah. that's going to show. But it, yeah. of course it doesn't. And yeah. of course the detail in R2-D2 on, on this fi this film, it looks a lot darker yeah. in shot than it's, it actually is. It's, it's aged, I think, through yeah. the films naturally as well anyway. Mm. Um, not that we've done that on purpose. But no. yeah, I think it has, even though people are disappointed in how little R2 is in the films. Yeah. We do shoot a lot, even if it's what you see continuously. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Because it's funny, because even Sean from uh, the the R two D two fan club, mm. you know, I was joking with him saying, "Oh, uh, he he dies in the end. They're going to destroy him." And I think even you were like, "I hope they don't." Yeah. Uh, that's not what I've been yeah. told. And I was yeah. like, "God, uh, you know, what's going to happen?" So yeah. I'm glad they didn't yeah. kill him off or anything. Yeah. So, which, which does yeah. go to show, you know, even we don't really no. know what's happening no. because no. you are just a, such a small part of the scenes that you're just to so, stitch it all together and know what's going on in your head and shooting stuff that doesn't happen as well yeah. Hassan tells a story about us going to Jordan because yeah. we I was flown out there with R2 and Hassan to, to shoot a scene there which was never seen yeah. but uh, what experience that was but again you know that was going to be an alternative end to the film oh which really yeah, yeah yeah wow yeah, okay. which, which didn't happen but um, you know I think what they did at the end was great anyway I, th I thought it was great with mm. Ray and BB-8 and um, yeah, it was, that was that was good. Well, you know, on that again, when they're shooting, I was uh, I was with Brian Herring and Dave, and I was behind them, and I had, I was mic'd up as well, so I could hear what the dialogue was, and I, I was an astronaut in the background somewhere, and um, Baby Bar or Ad Admiral Akbar's son, Young Bar, Young Bar, to call it. Yeah, I'm not sure what he's actually called. Um, yeah. He then, I'm pretty sure, one of his lines was. Uh, about Emperor Palpatine and at that point I'm going <gasps> you know but everybody else is cool and I'm going no one's looking okay right shh, shh. and you've got that inside of you all of a sudden yeah. you've got a bit of information and then of course a celebration when we're all when we're all watching yeah. and you know yeah. Palpatine's kind of yeah. announced yeah. because you know because of, yeah. of the way it went that down cool. and cool. I was like ah I did yeah. know about that but yeah. again you know you're yeah. under NDA and you can't say anything yeah. so yeah. you know so interestingly the Palpatine um, that part, the creatures department were partly involved in that. Right. But that was done towards the end of filming. That was one of the last things we shot at Pine Studios. And the creatures crew gradually disappear and, and go on to other jobs as the film comes to an end. Mm. And there's a few people left behind. But then there came out another NDA within the creatures department for those that were involved in Palpatine. Oh, wow. Uh, they set up a separate workshop. Yeah. And they worked on Palpatine in a separate workshop in the creatures department. We weren't allowed in there. If we weren't involved, we weren't allowed in. I had no idea what was what was going on in there. Wow. And um, eventually, it, of course, you've got you wonder what's going on. Yeah. But um, eventually, you just ignore it. You walk past the workshop. You're never going to go in there because you'd probably get into trouble. Yeah. And um, yeah, just like you, until I was at celebration and he came out on stage, I didn't know for sure yeah, yeah. that he was in it. I had I had an inkling, but uh, yeah, I didn't know for sure. Yeah. So there's even, you know, NDAs within NDAs. So you, wow. it's, uh, yeah. No, it's crazy. Yeah. But I mean, what a fantastic experience as well, you know, and uh, not just a fan. You know, we spoke, you know, we, we were driving to Black Park one day and you said something like, um, I can't remember exactly what you said, but something along the lines of, uh, we had a bet as well, which I honoured, by the way, didn't we? Yes. Um, yeah. it, uh, my names wouldn't be, oh, my of course. Would, wouldn't be in the credits yes. and you yeah. won a tenner off me for that. Yeah. And um, I think you said something about uh, the names in the credits or something like that. How would that make you feel? And, you know, actually, uh, I think I missed it on the first time. I, wow. I did miss it. Yeah, I did miss wow. it. And um, okay. it was only when someone posted it up and uh, then you came round and I had to give you £10. In fact, you came round for the £10. Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. No. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's... Uh, it's just an amazing, amazing experience. Yeah. Uh, incre incredibly privileged to have been part of it. 
And you know, my experience on this was was hugely positive. Uh, new learning experience around people that you know, you got Oscar Isaac, Daisy, John Boyega, Billy Dee Williams. You've got all these people there, yeah. and of course, you can't really engage with them, although you, you kind of half want to. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't really until you know I, sp I spoke to JJ Abrams at the rap party and just thanked him for, for the opportunity and Neil as well where we were hanging out with Neil uh, he's part of the League Towsy fan club isn't he? He is. Yeah. Yes. 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 And um, <laughs> you know we we were just having a drink with with these guys and it was cool you know and and that's when it comes back down to that base level when you're looking in on something versus actually sort of being there in reality and saying you know thank you so much for for everything you've done yeah. and uh, you know brilliant you know and i do like the film and i you know, i'll be forever thankful for the people that are involved with that to, to make it all happen so you know mm. thank and, you. and we're very fortunate as well that lucas film are so keen to get the fans involved still gotcha. and um you know as long as we don't screw it up thankfully you didn't so wow. <laughs> we'll find out in the next one see if they ask us back but uh no it's it's great that they they get the builders involved and yeah. um you know they they've put faith in us and um whoever we've got in has always done a good job we keep asking some people back but it's good to give new people opportunity as well you know yeah. so and just to build up these amount of people that could do remote control operating as well Definitely. you know the experience that they're doing the comic cons and so on Definitely. so you know huge credit to all the builders and um yeah, yeah. Fingers, fingers crossed there'll be more absolutely yeah yeah